Welcome to Caltech's Video Magazine. I'm your host, Gloria Barron. In this second edition, we'll have updates on previous stories and exciting new events taking place in the world of Caltech. In this edition, South African President Nelson Mandela addresses the National Foreign Trade Council, an SPRC update, and video conferencing. last edition, we mentioned a new environmental initiative. In October, Caltech's video magazine went to Singapore for the first COSART conference. Caltech's personnel from around the Caltech's world are here in Singapore on a three-day program to enhance their capability and understanding of oil spill response. We are forming, as part of this organization, a new Caltech's oil spill response team called COSART. Africa, the Middle East, Asia, Australasia are all included in this team. Participants took part in classroom and hands-on training at the East Asia Response Facility, also known as EARL, where they were introduced to some of the latest technology. They also went on board EARL's quick response vessels for an oil containment and recovery exercise. I think it is a great idea to get the Caltech people all around the world to come over to Singapore here to have such a workshop. In this way, we can have a chance to get to know each other, such that in case of any kind of crisis, we can work together as a team. In the event of an emergency, equipment and supplies can be transported to any Caltech site by Earl's own C-130 aircraft, and it will be met by Caltech's personnel who are familiar with the equipment's use. My aim in this exercise is to gain as much experience as possible to be able to get some uh, exposure back into New Zealand. We cannot stress too much the value of team working together here, getting to know each other in this environment. I think that uh, this operational initiative is also the recognition of a more comprehensive policy initiative with respect to Caltech's commitment to environmental health and safety. Patrick J. Ward, in his capacity as chairman of the National Foreign Trade Council, introduced Nelson Mandela, president of the Republic of South Africa at the 1994 World Trade Dinner in New York. President Mandela was the honored guest speaker for this occasion. In his address, the president invited foreign investment into South Africa. It was really very special evening. <clears throat> very warm reception for President Mandela. Actually, a really unique outpouring of, uh, of respect and, and love. I really se I've never seen anything like it at a public uh, affair. We in the United States business community welcome South Africa's re-entry into the world economy. The National Foreign Trade Council is a broadly based group of U.S. companies that are involved in international industry and commerce. The NFTC encourages policies that support international free trade. Well, I think the changes in South Africa will be the good, uh, to the good of everybody. Huh? Be good for the people of South Africa, be good for new investors and for older investors like ourselves who have been there for many, many years. The conditions are now ripe for practical work to start. We do appreciate that many companies have already taken major steps in this direction. The new government has provided numerous opportunities for economic growth, both for outside interest and its own citizens. Caltex will be there to keep pace with the demand for petroleum products and to meet the needs of South Africa for energy. In our last edition, we spoke with John Quinn on the ISO 9000 initiatives that are an important part of Caltex's pursuit of quality excellence in its operations. In September, John Quinn went to the Philippines to conduct a mock assessment at the Batangas refinery. ISO 9000 is a set of quality standards that is recognized worldwide. 
These standards offer a means to measure factors that affect the quality of products, services, and operations. And many Caltex companies are actively pursuing ISO 9000 certification. With an assessment coming up, the Batangas refinery brought in John Quinn to perform a preliminary mock assessment. I felt the assessment was very timely. The staff at uh, the Batangas refinery had uh, had to withdraw a little from the work of constructing the quality system uh, in the middle part of the year. So this was a very good opportunity to see exactly where they were and to really pinpoint themselves as to what might needed to be done to prepare for the certification. The mock assessment let us know the areas that we have to address to meet the ISO 9000 standard. John acts as a monitor. He reviews systems and documentation and provides a critique. This rehearsal stage helps identify gaps or shortcomings in the program. I have to back off and act just as though I was a third party assessor coming in from one of the certification bodies. The mock assessment helps to reinforce the enthusiasm and confidence of those who will undergo the test of the actual certification. Now we have a quality policy coming in from the top management of the refinery and we are able now to identify our, our contribution to that quality policy or goal. Through support services such as mock assessments, Caltex continues to demonstrate its dedication to the pursuit of quality goals. Now let's visit another refinery, the SPRC project at Mataput, and look at the progress they've made. Since our last report, four product storage tanks have been completed and hydro-tested, and construction is far advanced on the remaining eight. Additionally, work is in progress on the crude storage tanks. The construction schedule has been maintained despite a longer than usual rainy season. The dry season has begun and the workforce expanded from three to seven thousand. Additional workers will join the team throughout the next six months. In August, foundations were poured for the refinery itself. The crude distillation column will be installed here within the next few months. JGC, through innovative construction techniques, has saved thousands of man hours and made scheduling more efficient. At the refinery's office complex, interior work is underway. The cafeteria, fire station, clinic and entrance building are in progress. Crude oil will be piped to the refinery from a single point mooring system, which Star will build and operate 19 kilometers offshore. SPRC has reached an agreement with nearby Rayong Refinery Company in which RRC will contribute to construction costs in return for sharing use of the system. This joint ownership will result in savings of over $30 million for SPRC. We've also sealed another very important deal on behalf of SPRC. By being located in Mataput near several petrochemical complexes, we saw an opportunity to significantly increase refinery revenues by producing polymer grade propylene. This company has agreed to buy all polymer grade propylene from SPRC for a minimum of seven years. Meanwhile, 13 Thai engineers and process operators have traveled to the refinery in Cape Town, South Africa for hands-on training and operations. In Dallas, the Enterprise Information System Project, or EIS, is responsible for developing the computer systems for the refinery. Every job position will have a personal computer. Well, personally, I'm, uh, I'm pretty excited about it. it. It represents quite an opportunity, both within the refining sector and within computing. The focus on the users driving this technology rather than technical people telling people how to do their work, uh, I think it's going to give us a very high probability of success. The EIS project will be moving to Matafoot early this year, installing hardware and applications and assessing software needs for the various departments. Computers are also playing a role in community relations. SPRC donated 20 personal computers, as well as new windows, air conditioning and security screens to the Matafoot School. The center will give the students access to basic computing skills. In September, the first of STAR's expatriate children started classes at the Garden International School. 40 children of eight nationalities attend classes. The permanent quarters will be ready by January. If you wanted to configure an oil company around a region of fastest growth, you could not do a better job than Caltex. These are the opening words to a recent feature in Forbes magazine, The Jewel in the Crown. Demand for oil and related products is booming in the Asia-Pacific region as these economies continue to grow. 
Forbes indicates that with refining and marketing assets already in place, Caltex is in prime position to meet this demand for lubricants and fuels. Now let's go to the Weston Galleria for an evening dedicated to a very special group in the Caltex family. Dallas hosted the annual Quarter Century Club Dinner, honoring Caltex employees with 25 years or more of service. This length of tenure is not unusual at Caltex. Ladies and gentlemen, as your duly elected 1994 chairman, I'd like to first of all welcome you to the festivities this evening. More than 200 guests attended the event, including five new inductees in this distinguished club. The Philippines is really taking the lead in Caltex's quality initiative. Efforts paid off in a big way for the Pandakan Lube and Grease Plant when it received ISO 9002 certification from the British Standards Institute and the Philippines Bureau of Product Standards. ISO 9002 is an international benchmark for quality and we are proud to have measured up to that international benchmark here with Caltex Philippines. Our certification of ISO 9002 is tangible proof of Caltex's lube and grease plants, world-class quality, and its commitment to meeting its customers' needs. Dallas also welcomed associates from Japan and Korea and representatives of the Chinese Petroleum Corporation of Taiwan to the special Caltex Symposium in October. The meeting provided an orientation to Caltex. After the Dallas program, attendees also visited Texaco and Chevron facilities in New York and San Francisco. For more details, see the fall issue of Caltex World. Back at the home office, Caltex Chairman Patrick J. Ward gave an address on the status of the company and the vision for its future. Our vision and value statement starts by identifying Caltex, the we. The we in Caltex are the people. That's our most important asset. After that, Caltex is a hierarchy. We're a joint venture, we're a collection of companies, and a collection of great people. One of the things Ward discussed during the address was Caltex's vision and value statement. We are Caltex, a distinctive joint venture, an international family of petroleum companies and empowered people making the difference. We will gain competitive advantage and grow shareholder value by placing customers first, becoming the partner and brand of choice building our positions in the world's fastest growing economies, implementing core competencies and best practices, respecting cultures and the environment everywhere we operate, continuously improving resource productivity, leveraging the power of three, Caltech, Chevron, and Texaco, developing a uniquely open and informed organization. We live our values. Integrity, individuality, initiative, involvement, and innovation. Ward also announced that Caltex will be re-imaging its retail network starting in 1995. So look for exciting developments as the new year progresses. As a prelude to the new year, Dallas office employees gathered for the annual holiday party. The festivities included caroling and presentation of the Diamond Cluster Awards, the highest quality award granted by the Rewards and Recognition Committee. As a special surprise, the committee commissioned an honorary award which was presented to Patrick J. Ward, a true Caltech star. This was given in appreciation for his contributions to the TQM program. It's my privilege to present him with a special award. It's a Tiffany shooting star which has been engraved as follows. P.J. Ward, a true Caltech star. Communication is vital to business relationships and Caltech is always seeking ways to improve its communications. One method we're using is video conferencing. Let's find out more about this technology. Video conferencing is an exciting new development for Caltech's communications. We're a very geographically dispersed company, and we're also a very dynamic company right now. That means lots of activity going on and lots of need for communication that that creates. Video conferencing uses technology to allow people at remote locations to be involved in meetings. The image and sound are transmitted over dedicated telephone lines. To access the other party, you dial from the control pad just as you would a phone call. Any location that has the dial-up facilities and the, the hardware, compatible hardware, can video conference. 
Uh, for instance, if we had equipment in our South African office and our Singapore office and the Dallas office, any of those locations could connect to any of the other locations to set up a conference call. The basic requirements for video conferencing uh, happen to be what you can see to my left is the monitor, uh, the camera which is mounted above the monitor, uh, high quality speaker systems which you'll see on either side of the camera, uh, microphone. The camera is controlled from a panel that's uh, installed on the system and you can move the, you can position the camera left to right, up or down, or focus, uh, zoom in and out. Video conferencing allows for a complete presentation. You can transmit input from a document camera, VCR, or a computer. Good morning, Hi, Fred. Good morning, Fred. Good morning. How's our signal? Uh, looks good. Excellent. These executives were able to take part in the recent CFE conference in Manila from the 18th floor of Caltech's house in Dallas. I got interested in video conferencing by trying to find a way that we could cut down on travel because travel's time-consuming, very expensive, and to be quite honest with you, uh, I'm a little bit selfish. It's hard on the body, and I think we want to encourage the use of it so we can you know, be more effective in the use of our time, reduce travel, and hopefully cut down overall the expense of communication. Video conferencing helps us meet some of those needs. It allows us to get together and to share information electronically and to plan our activities and to make decisions, all in a way that is economical, both in terms of time and money. That's all for this edition. Once again, we'd like to remind you that this is your company and your magazine. If there's a story you'd like to see, let us know. Thanks for joining us. I'm Gloria Barron for Caltech's Video Magazine.